All right, so in my recent review of the Gerber Prodigy, I mentioned I plan to do a comparison video between that and the strong arm, but then I didn't buy the strong arm because my budget got slightly derailed by another, well, very tempting opportunity. Something that's been on my wish list, but I wasn't terribly sure about whether I wanted to spend the money, but then a really good deal came up on Amazon. Yeah. Now refer back to my review of the OSS where I wasn't super fond of it. I've had it for a while and then I did some modifications to it including we'll talk about the sheath. But let's go ahead and yes I've been saving it. Let's do the official unboxing. So first thing in the box is great exactly the same sheath but one of the things you'll notice on the sheath, well, I did that relief cut I showed in the video on the OSS to be able to grip it a little bit better. I put, well, basically a big wide belt loop with some Chicago screws. And yeah, this does open up a lot of possibilities for this sheath. So I'm not terribly upset, but they basically sent me the exact, the exact same sheath, all right? Let's take a look at the knife though. Comes packed separately, well, it's definitely heavier. And some bubble wrap with a nice little plastic cover. Ooh, that is definitely a lot more solid and surprisingly comfortable in the hand. I was afraid there was going to be some sharp edges here. Let's take a look at some preliminary cutting. I haven't done anything with it. Just took it out of the box for the first time, honest. Let's see how it cuts. Ooh, nice. Primary edge. Flip it over and let's see what the back edge does. As I re so I mentioned in that previous review of the OSS, the back edge on the OSS didn't, didn't ooh, cut very well, but this one does. This one cuts quite nicely on both edges. The blades look in many ways similar. This is the San Mai. So it's got the, uh, the VG core with, I believe, spring steel side panels. But let me take a couple of specs on it. And then, well, what I propose to do next. Okay, initial impressions. I'm really impressed. I've had this knife on my wish list for a long time and I was very reluctant to spend the money on it because MSRP right now is floating around 400 bucks. But it's just one of those knives that, just like swords or other weapons, I see them, maybe I handle them, and they just sort of call to me. Like Lee Merriweather in that, that old original Star Trek episode, I am for you. And I just, I can't get them out of my head. I know I'm eventually going to pull the trigger, but yeah, closer to $400. Especially given, well, problems... I had with the OSS that I talked about in the review of that knife, but since then I've made some modifications to it. I've been working with it a lot more, liking it a lot more, and then just happened to see on Amazon for sale, $247 and change. Yeah, couldn't turn it down, and I'm glad I spent the money. Stressed my, stressed my blade buying budget a little bit, but I think it was worth it in many ways. Some interesting things. It does weigh about twice as much as the OSS at, at 14 ounces, which is not surprising <laughs> given its construction. But some interesting things. The blade is very slightly longer, an eighth of an inch, but then so is the ricasso. So that's where the extra length is. So actual cutting edge is about the same, slightly longer in the ricasso for some reason. But it looks great. However, another interesting thing in the specs, the blade is actually slightly thinner than the OSS. The OSS is 3 16 which is a very common thickness for fixed blade knives in my head. This is 5 seconds, so a 32nd of, of an inch thinner, or five millimeters, at least according to the box. I didn't, I didn't measure it metric. But my concerns based on the OSS and then just the knife visually why was I reluctant to spend the money? Well, I was thinking I would have to do some significant modifications to a fairly expensive and potentially collectible knife. Why? Well, 
if you look at the hilt and the subhilt, very square edges. They are slightly rounded, very well polished. Everything, the fit and finish on everything is wonderful. No gaps, no seams, nothing. Everything's really well fit. But they are rounded and polished a little bit. And then also I was worried because the scales, which are my carta, also look kind of squarish, right? But they are rounded at the edges. Flat on the back, flat on the front strap, flat on the sides. A little bit of a palm swell, and then it flares out right here towards the pommel. The way it gets put all together, though, in my hands, it feels wonderful. Perfect, in fact. Don't have to do anything to the knife. Now, I'm going to do some things to the sheath, because you know, it's a plastic sheath, and it's easy to work on. It's actually kind of designed to be modified, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I'm not, I'm not going to touch the knife. Check it out. Yeah, I immediately, when I grabbed it, I went into the saber grip. And the saber grip with my thumb on the back feels great. Handshake grip feels great. No hot spots. I was worried that was going to dig into my delicate fingers, and it doesn't. Now, when I choke up and kind of do a hammer grip, I start feeling it a little bit on this knuckle here, but it's not, it's not bad. We'll see how it feels as I use the knife and put it to some stress tests and and action work and, and training and stuff like that but I don't think it's going to be the pro a problem and just everything feels good in the hand now we flip it over into the reverse grip this was a problem I had also with the OSS in the reverse grip it just never felt comfortable this way especially with that sub hilt sticking between my third and fourth finger here it feels fine yeah Everything feels really good. Thumb across, thumb on the back. Now, one thing I could do if it bothered me is choke down or, or up, or depending on how you're seeing up and down in this equation. I still have enough room on the handle to do that, but I, I just I don't think I have to. I think it just I just think it just feels great that way. It feels great in general. Balance, feel, everything. All right. There is another reason I decided to spend the money on this. Where are we going from here? All right, so standing up usually means action video, performance demonstration. I'm sorry, but that's going to have to wait because I want to put some time into this knife. One of the reasons why I bought it, questions that came up in our conversation on my OSS review about the Bob Loveless subhilt design. Is it functional? Is there any advantage to it over a conventional, well, knife hilt? Or was it just a fad that came and went? Something that made a knife look cool. And researching the topic online, I found surprisingly little, either on YouTube or the web in general, about the use of the sub hilt specifically. So, I've certainly spent, well, more than the last year and a half studying the classic HEMA masters, collecting the old texts, watching the videos, communicating with, with all of you online, folding that practice into, well, my decades of practice in, in Chinese and Japanese martial arts, and also the way, as I mentioned in other videos, I've kind of hybridized those into something that works pragmatically, practically for me. Yeah, this is going to go hardcore into that rotation. I'm going to see how it handles. I'm going to see how it works or potentially doesn't work. Spend some time with it. Come back. Do a proper, hopefully, performance demonstration, which includes, yes, it's going to include targets and comparison to other, well, more conventional kind of dives. Let's see how it does. Is this a worthwhile functional design or is it just pretty hopefully I can answer that question properly until then let's get a conversation going if you have any questions about knives like this I'm gonna roll that into those video topics if you've got any experience with knives like this definitely let's add that to the conversation but until that to be continued thanks as always for watching, following, subscribing, and I do hope to see you back for, well, 
that to be continued among other things.